Jack McAbee has always had what they call the clutch gene, dating back to high school. He was always the go-getter. He was that blue collar worker you always saw in the gym and he had no fear. Here's a clip from him in high school, just absolutely pulling up in his ma man in his face and won. I mean, this was the type of player he's always been. But last episode, we saw a glimpse of what Jack McAbee can turn into. He could be this team's closer. And in season one, we're gonna need a, need a leader early on to really lead this program. So can Jack McAbee put the team on his back? I guess we'll have to wait and see what season one has in store. Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and we start out episode three in the middle of some action here versus Jackson State. Thank you for tuning in to the UCF basketball dynasty, and we'll see if UCF can keep up their winning ways after an opening game victory is now we face Jackson State on the road, up by nine with about five minutes to go. We'll see if our team can hold on here. Here is Maccabee handling the basketball. And the point guard duties are going to be important this year. Here he is, pass to the right side. This is gonna be an open three by Larry O'Neal, who has 39 points in this game. He has went off today. So now on defense now, up by seven passing to the corner this is a deep one here now it's down to a five-point game here is Antonio Johnson working around Larry O'Neal 41 our first 41 point score of this dynasty but here goes Jackson State the other way with a foul and one and now it is to a four-point game here is UCF now on defense fade away three and that is good now it's a one point game. Jackson State has come all the way back in this one. Here is a three, an open three missed by Devon Bands. Here they go the other way, working it up the court. In transition, spinning layup, and this one will be off. But Jackson State will go to the free throw line, hitting the first. It's a tie ball game at 68. And just like that, our lead is erased. We'll see if Maccabee has another clutch moment in this game. So here is Jay Henry this time going the other way in traffic. Does not get fouled, but he gets his own rebound and puts it up and in. 70 to 69, we grab that lead right back. Under two minutes to go. Devon Bands could not get the deflection in the easy bucket underneath the basket and Jackson State's right back up by one. Here is Antonio Johnson. He drives the lane with the right hand. He will get it to go. It's back and forth, 31 seconds. And now Jackson State has one last possession. They work it around the perimeter this time. Working to the top, out to the corner, looking for the pick and roll. And he drives the lane with the right hand and it will go in the bucket. And now with 13 seconds to go, we're down by one. But the inbound pass is to McAbee and he cannot stay in bounds. So now Jackson State has possession. We will have to foul. And with doing the uh, game cast, the fouls do not carry over. So we foul all the way down to three seconds. Jackson State hits one of two. And now they have a two-point lead. Three seconds to go. Jack McAbee trying to get him the ball. He gets one last shot at the buzzer. And it is off. Jackson State comes all the way back. And McAbee had a good look. Could not get it to go off the back rim and it will be our first loss of the series what a game what a way to start this episode marconis four points 19 rebounds larry o'neill 18 of 30 from the field 5 of 11 from three 41 points and maccabee had zero points zero rebounds six assists a weird stat line from Maccabee after seeing that he could possibly be our leading scorer. I'm not so sure after that second game. So now we move on in the schedule. This time we play Texas Arlington. We'll see if we can beat them on the road. And here is uh, Johnson having a big game this game. 18 points and we do end up winning by two. Larry O'Neal with another big game, a double-double, 15 and 12. 
Darkuna's 10 and 17. He is a rebounding machine. And we get our second victory of the season. This time going up against Evansville. We'll see if we can win again. Here we are with a comfortable lead here. Double digit lead going into the second half. And now it's up to as many as 21 points. And we will hold on to win this one. As you can just see, Maccabee, a three point game. 33 minutes, only three points. Got to be better than that score of the basketball because he's not really distributing the ball that well either. But we'll see. We did get a couple of victories right there. So we sit here now at 3-1 and one, going up against Oregon State, our first uh, Power 5 matchup here as they are also 3-1. and one. We will go out with the same starting lineup as before. They are led by Theo Bates, who is a power forward, but their three leading scores are all power forwards with Bill Winslow as well, almost at a double-double, but three guys in double digits. This could be a tough game since they have the size also, and they are three and one like we just said, and we will see what happens here in this game because UCF needs to bounce back from that game winner loss versus Jackson State. I think we should be 4-0, especially with a nine-point lead with five minutes to go. So let's get this game underway as we are on the road. We will watch the opening possession. Working to the wing, back over to McAbee in traffic. And I wanna get him going early. I wanna get his momentum going, get his confidence up. He goes to the free throw line, hits the first, or misses the first of two. The second will be good though, but a good aggressive start here for the offense. Six seconds into the, ga into the game, already drawing a foul. So here we are in offense again. This is a deflection and going out of bounds, but save two dark hunas. And it will be good. And a 3-0 start here for UCF as here is uh, Theo on the other side. This is a jump shot. That one is good. And it starts out with a bucket back and forth from each team. Marcunas in the post this time, posting up his man. It goes straight at him. Good aggressiveness by our big man, the only senior on this team, really. And here is Maccabee handling the basketball, passing it off to, once again, Darkunas. He's got six points early on, getting our big man involved. Now a 7-3 game. Maccabee pushing it up the court, working it over. Good ball movement, and it's good. Antonio Johnson with the layup. 9-3 start as Oregon State answers that right back. As here we go, they're playing that full court pressure once again, working to the corner. Antonio Johnson with the three. We could not hit a three in game number one at all. We hit one three-pointer, and it was that Larry O'Neal shot to tie the ball game up. But here's Johnson in the corner again, and he hits two straight. He's got eight points as well. 15 to five start here for UCF. We love to see it. Here we go now, playing defense, setting the double team, fade away, shot in the post is good. Oregon State has some scores, three double digit ones, and here is, once again, a wild shot at the hoop. Good defense by UCF. Here we go the other way, Jordan White coming off the bench, passing over to Devon Bands. He will hit the jump shot. It's a good start here for UCF. So UCF off to a good start. Here's a steal by Antonio Johnson. He has the highest steal rating on the team. He goes coast to coast. Johnson with 10 early points, four of five from the field. But here's Oregon State the other way. And that is a good drive. And Nash Kolchek gets called for his second foul of the game so far. And now a 19-11 lead here in advantage of UCF. Here is Oregon State working it around to the corner. Pass inside. That was a great bounce pass to Gilliam. He's got six early points. But here is Marcuna's the other way. He's been putting up buckets early. He goes with the hook shot. It's good. There we go. Eight points for Marcuna's. Antonio Johnson and Marcuna's definitely need to step up this year if we want to make a run at our conference tournament. And here is a bucket. Oregon State answers right back. But here's Marcunas in the post again, going straight at him. Grant McCray this time guarding him. He had the smaller defend him. He go, defender. He goes right at him. Eight points. He's four or five from the field as well. He misses the first but hits the second. And I love the start that we have to this game. So 22 to 16. More defense. Jordan White. He flies. 24 to 16. And now UCF 
showing that we can play a little transition offense. We thought we were going to be a half-court team. We have been running quite well. Here's a deflection on defense. Look at the active hands. Oregon State puts up a tough shot, and that one goes. Those are the type of shots it's going to take to beat this type of defense we're playing. And here is Antonio Johnson passing to the wing, and it looks like that is going to be good. And I love the guys coming off the bench, especially with Bands and Jay Henry who hit that shot. We have a lot of good players. As here is Henry again, he gets another bucket. And that maybe should have been a foul. We go up by eight early on at the end of the first half. At the end of the shot clock, tough shot. Henderson, he hits another tough fadeaway. He's got seven early points. McAbee though answering right back. Aggressive move to the basket. And now there's under a minute to go. More defense by UCF, 30 to 22. Darkoon is all the way, and he gets it with the left hand. He's got 11 points in the first half, up by 10. And Oregon State scores one more bucket, and now we have the last shot here with 15 seconds to go. Larry O'Neill with the three, the hand in his face, and he can't get it to go. And here comes Oregon State now. They're going to hold for the last shot. Five seconds to go. They don't take the open three right there. They wait for a second. And a tough fadeaway three. And that is going to be off. I'm surprised he waited to take that tough shot. And now it will be an eight-point lead here for UCF going into halftime. Good start here for UCF. But they made some tough shots. Look at these hands in the face. And they're still hitting So a good start here for the UCF defense and offense. We're shooting over 60%. We're getting some uh, transition buckets as well and some fast break opportunities. Just need to keep that up. Here we go in the second half. McAbee asking for the pick and roll. This time passing it over to Antonio Johnson who went off in the first half along with Dark Hunas. Both players are in double digits. Antonio Johnson is our leading scorer. Uh, through a couple of games. He's averaging 16.8. Larry O'Neill with that big 41-point game leads us so far, but we'll see if he can keep that up. Five-point game. O'Neill in the corner. He can't hit that one. Missed open shot. And here comes Oregon State the other way, working it in the post. And a jump shot is good. Now it's a three-point game in favor of UCF as we need to get this offense going. Antonio asking for the pick and roll. He has been on fire today. He leads our team in scoring so far, 35 to 30. But here goes Oregon State the other way. Pass inside, and that one is going to be off. But offensive rebound put up and in. That is their leading scorer right there. Almost eight, 20 points a game. He's averaging 18, and now 35 to 32. Three-point lead here for UCF. Mangani Mwangi throws up a wild shot. That one is off. More missed shots from UCF, but... Here we go, the other way. Antonio Johnson, step back three, thinks about it for a second. Passes it over to Devon Bands. Devon Bands gets to the bucket and will get it to go. Good move and good layup right there, 37 to 32. Five point lead for UCF. But Oregon State answering right back with a pass inside in the post. Definitely using their big men today. Here's a wild shot though, put up. Offensive rebound once again and it's going to be good. Oregon State is killing us on the offensive boards in the second half. And now here we go. It's a one-point game. Passing it inside. Nash Kolchak goes up for it, but will get called for the offensive foul. So one-point lead here for UCF. Six and a half to go. Here's a drive to the basket, and it's good. Oregon State takes the lead. We need to work on retaining these leads as now Oregon State is up by one. McAbee steps back to the free throw line. Good shot. McAbee's got no fear. Now it's a one-point game in UCF's favor. As here we go on defense. Good defense by McAbee. Playing the 2-3 zone. We switch to it through the first half. Here they are working around the perimeter. Good defense by McAbee. 16 on the shot clock. We'll see what they do. Passing inside. It's tough fadeaway. It's good. They are making a ton of tough shots. And here they are playing defense. Oregon State with the steal. They go the other way. Here working it inside and a foul by Darkunas. His third of the game. Both of our big men, Kolchek and Markunas, will have three fouls. And now 39 to 42, a three-point game. Here is Jay Henry, though, getting double teamed. Passing it out to the corner. This is Cody Stanley off the bench, but he can't hit the open 
jumper. And now it is a 39 to 42 game. Five minutes to go. Here's another tough shot by Oregon State and they get the foul call. Henry gets called for that one. And now it is a three point game. They go to the line and make it a four point game. But here's Cody Stanley getting to the bucket again. And he cannot hit that layup. That was point blank. So here comes Oregon State the other way. But good defense by Stanley. He gets the steal right back. And here goes McAbee. A two-point game possibly should have been a tie ball game right there. And now here we go with a chance to tie it up. At the end of the shot clock, McAbee throws one up in that one. We'll be off. Our three-point shooting is definitely something we have to work on. As here we are down by two. Long three. Offensive board. Lawrence, it's good. And Oregon State just continues to kill us on these offensive boards. As here we are now working around. Design play for Antonio Johnson. And another three missed. Oregon State taking advantage of these missed shots. But here's Johnson almost with the steal. The deflection right back to Oregon State. And it's an easy layup. A six-point lead. It gets up to seven at one point. And now we have two minutes to go. We are just shooting ourselves in the foot with, with in the feet with these missed shots. Here is a nice pass inside to Larry O'Neal. He lays it up and in. But here comes Oregon State the other way. Good block by O'Neal. Here we go. Antonio Johnson stepping back. Can he hit one finally? He does. A two-point game here. And now with about a minute to go, 48 to 46, we need a stop. Here's good defense. Larry O'Neal with a couple of good defensive possessions. And we force him out of bounds. And now we have a chance to tie this ball game up. Just like game one, McAbee to the bucket and he can't hit it. A left-handed layup and he can't get it to go. You don't see that every day from Jack McAbee. When he has the moment, he usually hits it. And now they go to the free throw line for a one and one and another offensive board. You've gotta be kidding me. Theo Bates who leads their team. Actually, he does average 20 points a game. And he goes to the free throw line. That one is good. A three-point game here with 30 seconds to go. Make it four. And now we have to hit a couple of shots here. McAbee gets the inbound, and he pushes it up the court, trying to pass it around, and it's deflected. And Oregon State ends up with it. We go and foul, but it's probably a bit too late. Oregon State will win this game by five. What a tragic way to lose that game. And I think we just got out rebounded there. And especially on the offensive side of Oregon State took advantage and we just could not get those defensive rebounds. We definitely need to work on that a little bit. We don't have a whole lot of guys who specialize in rebounding, but you would think the hustle of Mwangi, the rebounding ability of Darkunas would be enough, but we definitely need to clean something up there. And we definitely missed some threes. That means I definitely want to get another three-point shooter in here. I'm, I'm not sure who it will be. I like Milo Yarbrough, but I play with auto subs, so it kind of puts him in when they think he should be in. But I think we should have won that game. Our second loss of the season right there, that one was a tough one. Even probably tougher than the Jackson State because in that game right here, we were pretty much having all the momentum on our side early on and we just kind of let them back in it, especially with the rebounding and those tough shots they were hitting. I mean, sometimes teams are just gonna hit those shots, so I'm not really that concerned. But our rebounding is definitely something that I want to clean up and then our three-point shooting has to improve as well. So we are three and two to start this season, and I'm pretty sure next episode, I will try to get through all the non-conference games before entering conference play. Uh, I might also show our recruiting board really quickly. It's very, very sad at this point, but you guys will see that soon. Uh, and I will get through a few of these games. I want to play the LSU game. I want to get through Miami and all these other non-conference schools as well. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Thank you guys for tuning into the series so far. Hope you guys enjoy it. It will be a fun ride. So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm about my pledge. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. They're like fall leaves in a bag filled. 
Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quick to say my piece, I'm so after school special. She brainy but them jeans looking like.